leave this video understanding what the different types of chiller evaporators are and what are some different parameters we use per the different st style. How you doing? I'm Holden Schoenberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems and I'm here to talk about chiller evaporators today. Starting off with a very basic one, we've got brace plates. So brace plates are quite literally just a series of plates or chambers that are many times welded or braced together. And so with each plate, the chambers will alternate which fluid goes through there and the two fluids never intersect. So with that, we'll have our metering device on one side, putting refrigerant into the bottom of the brace plate. And you, you could have dual circuits. We could have two circuits. We could have one single circuit. It works both ways. And the brace plate is then taking that liquid refrigerant and then boiling it off in the water that's flowing through. The water for brace plates, the, so the entering water is going to be coming into the top of the brace plate, and we're going to have a counter flowing action. So your suction gas is going to leave the top, your relieving water is going to leave the bottom of the brace plate. The chambers are separated and they have kind of this rippling action to them. All of those things help create turbulence and, a, and encourage heat transfer between the refrigerant and the water. That's your brace, blaze, brace plate. And typically a brace plate approach value is going to be somewhere around 8 to 10 has been my experience. Now your approach is the difference between your saturation temperature and your leaving water temperature. If you don't have a heavy load or if you if you have really good heat exchange, then that approach value will be really low. Your saturation will be really close and in some cases, you know, just barely off of what your leaving water is. Being an evaporator, your saturation is going to be lower than your leaving water. So, you have to take some of those things into account. If if we've got a a brace plate this not exchanging heat properly but we need 45 degree water well if we're running a 10 degree approach well that means that our uh evaporator saturation is 35 degrees so just be mindful of how those correlations work now the next type is kind of a tube and tube or kind of a vat style almost where you see this on little process chillers where we've we've literally got a bigger tube and a smaller tube the tubes are counteracting in flow, just very similar to a brace plate. Your metering device is going to be putting liquid into the bottom, suction gas coming out the top, entering water is coming into the top, leaving water is coming out the bottom. It's the same, same basic principle, a lot of the same basic values. Those are typically going to be a 10 degree approach a heat exchanger, and you're only going to see those on smaller scales. Uh, you know, it's things like little five, 10 ton uh, process chillers and stuff. You're not going to see that on a larger scale uh, system with, you know, 100 plus tons, especially. Getting into the larger evaporators, we get into the shell style. So the shell is literally a big steel cylinder with a bunch of tubes in the middle. It is called a shell and tube. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. So to simplify it, we've got flooded or DX. So your DX style is going to have your refrigerant on the inside of the tubes and your water on the shell side. One obvious way you know it's a uh, DX shell and tube is the water is going to be hitting the side of the barrel where your uh, refrigerant is going to be coming into the end bell. The end bell is the where the end caps are on either end of the cylinder uh, and then your the the main body of it is is your where it's going to hit the shell so if you see that configuration you have a dx evaporator and you should be running a, an approach value of 8 to 10 degrees or less on that again if, if things are working really well you've got proper gpm you should see uh the lower end of that spectrum so you might see as low as four, five, six degrees, and that's perfectly fine. It's normal. Don't don't worry about that. Lower is not the main issue with these uh, approach values. It's when they exceed the approach value that it's evidence of something is wrong. The, a variety of issues of what that could be. I, mean, I could do some videos detailing some of those things more, like well, how to deal with high approach. It's a good idea. I'm gonna write that down. Now the final style we get into are known as flooded shell and tube. And there's actually two different types of flooded that we use. But 
with a flooded, it's basically the opposite of a DX shell and tube. The refrigerant is on the outside, on the shell side, and your water is in the tubes. And those are going to run a three degree or less, typically three or four degrees or less on your approach value. And it's much, much lower approach. And very similarly, you'll know the difference by your water will come into the end bell and your refrigerant lines will connect to the main shell. So your liquid line or your two phase line coming into the evaporator is going to be more towards the bottom uh, for a traditional flooded. And then your um, suction gas is going to be coming off the top of the barrel. Now, this is where we get into the other style. You've got your traditional flooded, which means that all of the tubes in the evaporator get fully submerged. By submerged, I mean that they're fully covered by the liquid refrigerant. They, they, they should be completely encapsulated to make sure that we've got proper heat transfer. But they require a lot more refrigerant. The alternative style is a hybrid flooded but it's by hybrid it's a cross between a fallen film and a true flooded so essentially with a hybrid you're going to have you'll have the bottom section of tubes will still be fully submerged but you'll have this whole upper section that will the refrigerant will be sprayed literally sprayed over the tubes to take the heat and then will spray more than those tubes can flash off, and that's where the liquid in the bottom gets collected. Now, how to tell the difference between a flooded or a hybrid is where does your two-phase line, the line coming out of your metering device, where does that tie in? Does it come into the top of the barrel or the bottom of the barrel? If it's at the bottom of the barrel, you've got a flooded. If it's at the top of the barrel, you've got a hybrid. And that's that's the 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 main differential that you'll see and so yeah you're if you have a hybrid your two phase line coming in feeding refrigerant and your suction gas line will both be type tap tapped into the top of that evaporator barrel in some way now most of them had a pretty similar approach value of eight to ten degrees at the top end and they typically do run lower than that except for our flooded style and that's because flooded and hybrid evaporators, so a hybrid will still run a three or four degrees or less, just the same as a traditional flooded. The reason they're so much lower in approach is they're a lot more efficient in their heat transfer process. So approach is a direct measure of how well and how effectively we are transferring heat from the water to the refrigerant. And the worse our heat transfer is, the lower we're going to have to drop our saturation to create a higher differential between the refrigerant temperature and the water temperature in order to get the heat exchange that we need to meet our leaving water set point. And that's really where that value uh, just means anything at all. It's the, the simple fact that we've got to have so much differential between there uh, and with the flooded you know being able to fully submerge the tubes in a liquid refrigerant really helps with that efficiency process and that is where that that lower approach value and that higher efficiency come from but it requires a lot of refrigerant even hybrids hybrids still require a lot of refrigerant especially compared to these other evaporator styles like dx or a brace plate you know they don't need as much refrigerant as this flooded style but it comes back to efficiency what is our efficiency we're trying to achieve with this system so those are your basic evaporator styles those are the approach values that would go with them and from there you would just troubleshoot anything like normal but it's really critical that your gpm be on point and then you're going to operate off of the same basic saturation fundamentals as you would anything else you really want to be careful not to get down into a, a freezing saturation well instead of freezing air on a coil we're going to freeze literal water in a, in a in a pipe or a tube at this point so uh we don't want to do that either way if you enjoyed this training or if it gave you any great benefit go to chilleracademy.com i've got a whole course on there where i take you through the chiller fundamentals and just teach you what you need to know so that you can 
effectively come into this chiller market and be successful and just have the career that you want to have and, and really own your craft with that MTT. Make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. I appreciate you.